All right, so we just finished baselining this car on the dyno. Before we put the E85 in it, before we put that tune on it, we wanna make sure that everything's running normal and the power that we're seeing is what we'd expect out of this car. It's on a completely stock tune, 93 octane from New York, which is where the car's from. This car already does have some modifications done to it. It has the Eventury intake, the Lingenfelter PTR intake manifold with the 95 millimeter throttle body, as well as some headers. That's pretty much it on this car. Still stock cam, nothing done in the heads, so pretty straightforward. And the owner shipped it out here for E85, so we just finished up our baseline runs on the stock tune. Before we put E85 in it and see what that's gonna do before we change the tune at all on here, we want to start there just to make sure that everything looks normal and the power is what we'd expect for this car with the modifications it has and the fuel that's in it. Since the ECM's already unlocked, we can actually log everything that we'd possibly want to see versus if we don't have the ECM unlocked, there's very little that we can actually see. So we did some runs. We did about four runs, got everything up to temperature and looked through the log to make sure that it doesn't show anything funny. And it looks great. The power's to be expected. We'll cover those numbers in a bit once we get the E85 all done, but everything looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and put E85 in it, flash the E85 map and start tuning. Now, E85 doesn't always necessarily mean exactly 85% ethanol, as the name would suggest. There are different blends that you can see at the pump. We tested this today and it's at 77%, so it's a little on the higher side, which is helpful. Sometimes you can see as low as 60% from some stations. That's where flux fuel comes into the picture, but that'll be a different discussion. We can't do flux fuel on these cars at the time of this filming, but we are working on it and it looks like we may be able to do that in the near future. So that'll be cool. For now, we're just doing E85. The nice thing about the C8 is that the fuel control is, is full-time closed loop. That means as long as we get an ethanol tune in there or something that's gonna be basically suitable for 70 for 60% to 85% ethanol, which is what we're doing with this car, as long as you have something in that blend range, the fuel control in the car can manage it from there very well and you don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna be using 77% today. We're gonna to completely fill the tank. It is nearly empty right now of 93, which is important when we're doing a full E85 tune so we get the content in the tank as high as possible. So we'll get this guy all filled up to the very top, flash on the E85 map and start testing. All right, so the car's full of E85 now. Before I flashed the tune, I went ahead and just drove it on the stock tune, watching the fuel trims. Then I can tell once the ethanol's actually getting to the injectors and into the engine, I can tell by the fuel trims coming up really high. At that point, I know it's ready for the E85 map. I know it's ready to do its pulls immediately. So we did that first. Now we're gonna go ahead and flash this E85 map on here. Now, as far as what we're changing with E85, we are basically telling the ECM in here to expect E85. So we're adjusting it, not just in the sense of telling it to necessarily add fuel, but we're telling it about the properties of E85, which is important. We're also adjusting the cold start cranking fueling. We're optimizing all the timing curves, fuel curves. Basically everything in this ECM is being adjusted to account for E85 so it runs it correctly. That's the big difference between just letting an ECM learn and handle some E85 or just kind of fudging it in there and between actually tuning it for E85. That's the big difference here. So that's what we're doing. We've got the map all set up for it. I'm gonna go ahead and get it flashed here. Now, something a little different and unique to the C8 compared to if you happen to have ever tuned your own C7, we actually turn the ignition off to do the flashing. That's kind of unusual. Most cars get flashed with the ignition on, but a C8 is very different. So we do turn it off before we start the flash. So we get that done, we hit okay. The nice thing is the write time is very quick, 18 seconds in total to write the changes to the ECM. That's pretty awesome. All done, we hold the start button here. No brake pedal, don't wanna start it. We're just bringing it back to the on position. Hit our button here, does some resetting. We close it and we turn it off.
right, so we flashed our E85 calibration in here, got the car warmed back up and made a few runs, and it looks great. Baseline, this car was about 460 at the wheels, which is pretty standard for the mods that it has, good 93 octane fuel. And with the E85 file we flashed on here, the power went up to 495 and the torque went up to 476. That's basically 35 wheel horsepower and 35 wheel torque across the entire power band, all the way from 2,500 RPMs through the red line. Now this E85 calibration that we have on this car right now is pretty well developed. We've already done a lot of testing, a lot of time on the dyno with it, so it's probably gonna be pretty close. But while we're on the dyno, we're gonna go ahead and try some different settings for this car just to see if it likes something a little bit different and see if we can pick up any power. Perhaps we can get a little bit closer to the 500 horsepower we saw on the first car we did, you guys saw in the last video, or this car might just be where it's at right now. But either way, these are really solid numbers right now, but we're gonna see what else we can do. So I reviewed the logs, I've got all my changes made. We're gonna go ahead and put this new file in the ECM, resync everything with all the GM tools, and do some more testing. All right, so we're all finished with the fine tuning. We didn't really gain any extra peak power. We are still right at that 495 mark with the car. We did pick up a little bit of power in the mid-range with the tuning updates. We also cleaned up a few areas, improved the fuel trims and some things like that. So really just some fine tuning, but ultimately 495 is right where we landed, which is very impressive. As we said, this car baselined at 460, stock tune with the mods on it, compared to a similar day, a stock C8 baseline might look like 435. So about 25 horsepower with the mods, another 35 horsepower with the E85, and that's a pretty nice jump in power. So we're all set with the dyno on this car. Everything looks great, nothing else to do in here. We're gonna unstrap it, take it on the road, do some really thorough road testing with it, just make sure everything's perfect before we wrap it all up and ship it back to our customer in New York. All right, so we're off the dyno now. Taking the car out, doing a little bit of test driving with it. We wanna make sure everything's perfect before we ship this car back to New York. So I'm just going through and kind of sanity checking everything, making sure my fuel trims look good, make sure the car looks good when it's in power, make sure it feels smooth, shifts smooth. We haven't disrupted any of that stuff through the tuning and this car feels fantastic right now. You wouldn't even know we put E85 in it. You wouldn't even know we tuned it from the way it drives, which is a good thing. That means it drives really smooth, drives normal, but when you put your foot down, you definitely feel the extra punch. One nice thing we can do when we're tuning these cars is if you don't want the four cylinder mode or the displacement on demand, that is something that we can disable. So any of the modes you're in when you're cruising, you don't have to worry about it changing to four cylinder mode sounding funny if you have an exhaust or running kind of crappy. So that's a nice thing. This, this customer did not want the DOD, so it's disabled. So I'm cruising along in touring mode in eighth gear, 70 miles an hour, still all eight cylinders being used. But touring mode's kind of boring, so I'm gonna put it back in track mode. All right, let's give her a little pull through the gears here and see how it feels. That's a lot more fun than just pump gas. So the car pretty much drives and shifts and feels exactly like stock with the E85 tune in here. The biggest difference is simply just all the extra power and torque that you feel immediately all the way through the power band. It reaches the rev limiter quicker in every single gear and keeps pulling harder and harder, which is a nice improvement over just regular pump gas or a stock tune. Really the only disadvantage to E85 that you're gonna run into is the fact that you have to fill the tank up a bit more often. The reason being is that it takes a higher volume of ethanol to get the same burn as pump gas. So we use more of it, especially at high load situations, you're gonna go through it a little bit quicker. 
the, the upside is that in most places, ethanol is cheaper at the pump. So compared to running premium fuel, your cost to use E85 is typically about the same or sometimes a little bit less than premium. You're just filling up more often. So it ends up kind of being a wash, but you get the extra performance. You get all the extra knock resistance. It burns cooler, it burns cleaner in the engine. So it's got a lot of benefits there. Other than burning through it a little bit faster, the only other real downside to E85 that you know we like to tell people about is in the winter, in cold start situations, it doesn't burn, it doesn't light off as well as pump gas does when you're getting started. So you might have some extra cranks. It might take a little bit longer to start the car. We've adjusted for that in the tune. It should be pretty darn solid. We'll definitely test that over the winter period with our cars, make sure they start up in real cold weather for the guys that do drive their Corvettes all the time. But we do recommend changing your oil a bit more often if you use your Corvette in cold weather. The reason being is you will get a little bit more fuel dilution into your oil compared to gas. It's an issue either way in the winter. You should technically change your oil a bit more often in the winter just because of that reason. But with ethanol, you definitely want to go a little bit earlier on your intervals.